So then um, next is um, dedicating the roots of virtue of having made this prayer. Um, and first dedicating the training of bodhicitta. In whatever way Valiant, Manjushri and Samantha Bhadra know how to transfer merit, so do I dedicate all of my own virtues that I might train to be like them. So these words are, are quite clear and don't require much explanation. Of course, one could um, expound on that too. But basically, we are dedicating a, a just according to how the Buddhas have dedicated. And so some people don't really understand the, the, not, not the purpose and how to dedicate. And so now when they read that and they know how to dedicate, they should dedicate just like the Buddhas, like Manjushri and so forth, have dedicated no matter what the size of one's virtue. In the Jigong Kagyu dedication prayer, um, it says, I dedicate all the roots of virtue accumulated by myself and others in samsara and nirvana throughout the three times and so forth. And so uh, because there might be some who don't know how to um, dedicate, um, so, um, so this is how we dedicate. Um, and then I'm um, dedicating like the Tathagatas on page 47. Uh, since dedication is praised as supreme by the victorious Buddhas of the three times, I dedicate all of these roots of virtue to accomplishing the deeds of Samantha Bhadra. And uh, so as all these um, virtues, those that we, uh, we, we recall, those that we do not recall, and the innate virtue, and so forth, different kinds of virtue. And we can take, bring them all to mind. That was actually also taught by Lord Chikden Sumgen, probably in the Gongchik, that we, we, we bring it to mind and, and all of these things and, and take them as, as mine and then um, dedicate them, give them away for the sake of all sentient beings. Just like uh, if you are a little child who receives some, a lot of money, you take all that money and you put it in the bank. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Dewa Then um, dedicating the actualization of the result of having made this prayer. At the moment of my death, may all my obscurations be removed, that I may behold Amitabha, the Buddha of boundless light, and go to Sukhavati, the pure land of perfect bliss. Um, so at the moment of my death, may all my obscurations be removed. So these are the subtle obscurations to seeing the nature of the mind and the obscurations of the afflictive emotions. And they are removed through the power of bodhicitta. And then this pure land of Sukhavati, so that's the pure land of Devachan. And how does that come into existence? It is created um, through merit. So you're born there through merit. And it is created through the Buddha Amitabha's bodhicitta and his aspiration prayer and the many offerings that he made to millions of Buddhas. And he accumulated great merit on the basis of the six paramitas. And so when he made this prayer in the presence of all these Buddhas, he said that there must be a pure land where ordinary sentient beings may be reborn easily. And such, um, such a great pure land must be created. And he said that because at that time, in order to be born in any of the other pure lands, one must have attained, attained at least the eighth Bhumi. So he wanted to create a pure land where ordinary beings can be born if they only make a supplication prayer. And this is the pure land of Devachan. It was created as a result of this aspiration. 
And so this is therefore also related to aspiration prayer. And the Pure Land of Deva Chen is the natural reflection of bodhicitta, of the Buddha Amitabha's compassionate prayer. Um, there's also a prayer called the Prayer of Sukhavati, and that prayer actually is also a very beneficial prayer. It's very easy to understand and complete in meaning. So then it says here, may I behold Amitabha. So being born in Devachan, may I behold Amitabha. When one sees the ultimate truth, one realizes one's own Buddha nature. So one realizes that whichever deity one has practiced, any Yidam deity, the guru, is all the reflection of one's own mind. The deity or the guru manifest as the reflection of one's own mind. The mind is just like a stainless mirror wherein anything can be reflected. So the form of the Buddha is recognized as one's own form, not separate from one's own mind. So when one sees the ultimate truth, one realizes that one's mind is not separate from the Buddha Amitabha. It all is the manifestation of one's own Buddha nature. And this is also taught in the Sirkangma, the Golden Temple prayer. So when all obscurations are purified, one actualizes Buddha nature. So through the union of the relative and the ultimate bodhicitta, the pure land is created naturally. And the pure land is a natural manifestation of one's own mind, one's own bodhicitta. The six realms of samsara temporarily are a natural manifestation of one's own six afflictive emotions. Um, so then once one has taken birth in Devachan, so then it says, in that blissful land, may I completely fulfill all of these aspirations and benefit all beings as long as the universe remains. So once one has reached the pure land of Devachan, everything will be accomplished just um, as one has prayed when making this aspiration prayer that we just mentioned, all these, the, the long prayer we mentioned. Uh, and so, so when are these qualities actualized, the prayer, the aspiration really comes to fruition once one is born in the pure land of Devachan. Kang Um, and so it says, may I completely fulfill all of these aspirations. Uh, so all of these aspirations, as, um, especially as we mentioned before, um, there are as many sentient beings as um, space is vast. And uh, for as long as there are sentient beings, may I continue to exist to benefit them. And so this term, may I completely fulfill, uh, so um, this term, and the Tibetan implies uh, like a pervading. May I completely um, fulfill, like f pervade, um, full make make it make them come to full um, to all pervasive um, fruition uh, for as long as sentient beings exist. 
So this is dedicating the actualization of the result of having made this prayer. So this um, I don't know, completely fulfilling uh, also is that uh, may I um, manifest um, countless um, billions of emanations pervading all of samsara and nirvana, pervading all sentient beings and fulfilling um, their, their benefits. Um, and then dedicating toward uh, 49, toward receiving a prophecy from the Buddhas directly Joyful there in that blessed assembly of the Buddha, may I be reborn in the holy ones, uh, like the holy ones, from an exquisite lotus, and may the Buddha Amitabha himself foretell my own enlightenment. Uh, so, yeah, these words um, are quite um, clear. So we pray that we may be born um, in a lotus. So when one, is take, when one takes birth in Devachan, one takes um, birth through a, a lotus. And then once born there, may the Buddha Amitabha give a prophecy regarding my own enlightenment. <laughs> Uh, then dedicating towards the benefit of sentient beings having received their prophecy, uh, may I thereafter emanate endlessly through the power of perfect wisdom to accomplish countless benefits for living beings in all the ten directions. Um, so uh, this is now really this, the meaning of this term, uh, pervading them completely. Uh, so um, in order to benefit countless sentient beings. So the words here also are very clear. Be Simply the 
Omar da prese de ne va ne va te tre 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 So, for example, if you have immeasurable love and are generous to a single living being, like an animal, for example, um, there is there will be a, a wish to benefit them because so because there is love for them, um, you will want to give to them. You will have this wish to help them, and so this is the mind that has the power to pervade all sentient beings. And this is the mind that becomes an offering to all the higher beings. And from this mind, these millions of emanations manifest to benefit sentient beings. So wherever the mind is, that's where Buddha nature is. And if one understands bodhicitta, one will be able to pervade all beings' mind. If one does not understand bodhicitta, then uh, one still is like a, an ice block in floating around in the water. So one still is this solid um, thing that doesn't really connect to others. But once you have cultivated bodhicitta, the ice block melts into one with the ocean water. And then it can be together with all sentient beings. It pervades all beings. So it arises from immeasurable love and compassion. And then when immeasurable equanimity arises, the mind is with all beings instantly. Um, in the Great Liberation Sutra, as we mentioned, it says that it is of a greater benefit to meditate for a moment than to safeguard the lives of all beings in the three realms. And that is because the, the mind is what actually can pervade all sentient beings. So for example, if you have the wish to give to others, to be generous to an animal, for example, to any living being, then this wish, um, that becomes an offering to the higher beings and a benefit to the sentient beings. So the, the real power is, is generated, the power of mind is generated through the altruistic mind. เออเรียกว่าคําบอกเตลาสวาคาจิจินจําเจเป็นนะจ๊ะจังหวะจิติสังคมตรัสเตลาตบานนี่ตัวจุดลงนั้นนี่ฉะกิยงกุยอสาเ
Um, or, uh, for example, Logic den Sumgan, um, his appearance was also predicted in a prophecy by the Buddha himself in the sutras, um, where it said that in the future there will be one called um, Ratna Shreem, and um, or Rinchimbal, and he will look after um, an assembly of a hundred thousand um, disciples. So, th um, so these are sort of prophecies, um, and also um, so Kempo said that. So here the Buddha Amitabha will foretell my own enlightenment. So that is at the time when one is born in Deva Chen, one is born there as a Bodhisattva. And then the Buddha Amitabha will give a prophecy of this is um, how you will attain enlightenment in the future. And this is the place you will attain enlightenment in the future. <laughs> Sem uh, and also, now generally, it's really important that we understand the actual meaning of the words because sometimes um, there are different spellings, um, different ways of spelling, but sounding very similar. And then when one doesn't understand the meaning, then one can easily mix up and misunderstand uh, the actual meaning. For example, um, there are different um, prints of the prayer of excellent conduct. And in one of them, for example, it says, um, and this is how it should be. So this is a Tibetan um, uh, a grammatical thing now, but so basically it says, um, practice um, um, the benefit of, uh, perform um, the benefit of others extensively. And so extensively here means um, in Tibetan, so mang, 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 right? So mang che, so do it extensively. But then some leave the ng out, so it's ma che. So then it becomes, if you read it like this, um, then it means that they don't accomplish the benefit of others. Um, and so then, because of that spelling mistake, um, if one just looks at the words, then one can really, there's a danger of misunderstanding the meaning completely. So that's why it's uh, always very important to understand the, the actual meaning of the text. So it really, the meaning has to arise in your mind. Uh, and then the concluding activities of the text this concludes the Noble King of Aspiration Prayers for Excellent Conduct, extracted from the Buddha Avadam Saka Sutra, as taught by the Bodhisattva Samantha Bhadra to Kumara Sudana. <laughs> Pachina, Jeva, Yinam, Cholo, Tokyo, 
Um, and then at the end is the translator's colophon. And the translator's colophon is not taken directly from the text. It is extracted from Vairochana um, Arakti's um, translation of the Buddha Avadam Saka Sutra. The commentary by Shakya Shenyan comprises 62 verses while another, another commentary of the Buddha Avadam Saka Sutra contains 60 verses. Most scriptures include 63 verses. Bhutan Rinpoche mentions 97 verses. Whether the text has been altered or reflects the original enlightened intent is subject to further review. <laughs>
And then now the, at the end it says the conclusion of the prayer on page 53 through whatever small virtues I have gathered by reciting this aspiration of Samantha Bhadra may all the virtuous aspirations of living beings be accomplished in a single moment uh, so uh, through having recited this aspiration and prayer for excellent um, conduct um, I dedicate um, all the virtue that has been accumulated um, which is like putting it into the, the bank or the treasure house of the, the Buddhas. So the dedication um, protects the virtue we have accumulated. Um, if we do not dedicate our virtues, there are four causes that lead to the decline of our virtues. And one of them is if we regret. For example, if one person makes a nice uh, statue um, and then another person tells them, but the way you did it is wrong. Um, then the other person may regret that they made the statue in the first place. Actually, one time I had um, a benefactor who was quite new to Buddhism, and he made this statue of the, of the Buddha, and he showed it to me. Um, and the way he placed the Buddha's hands, the, the meditative gesture, was actually not correct. Um, but so he asked, how is it? How do you like, do you like it? And of, of course, the, I told him, um, this is um, for, for your first time, it's really good. Um, if I would tell him anything negative, uh, that, it's, that it's wrong, then he would really regret that. Uh, and he made that statue with a really pure intention. So whenever someone accumulates some merit, for example, they create a tanka or a statue and so on, we have to tell them that it is, it is, it is wonderful. If you tell them there is something wrong with it, there is a mistake, then they may regret it. And if they regret it, then that destroys their root of virtue. So that is one. And then the second one is, is if we become prideful, if we take pride in what great things we have done. For example, if we have been very gen generous to someone, or been, we have been very disciplined, and then we think that I did this or I did that. If you feel very prideful about your merit, then that also destroys your virtue. And then the third one is if you fail to dedicate at all, if you don't recognize the virtue, in other words. For example, as we mentioned, many scientists, they produce cars and airplanes, and that is actually all a virtuous activity but they don't recognize that, and instead they think only about the accumulation of money, how much money they will, how much profit they will have from selling those cars or airplanes. And therefore, they have already lost at least um, half of the, res of the p positive result. So when one recognizes the virtue in whatever one does, one can bring it to mind and then dedicate it. In the Vajrakilaya text, in the words of auspiciousness, it says, "May um, as in, uh, for the dedication, it says, may, um, may the virtues become transformed uh, and complete and perfectly completed uh, within the great purity. And so this, this term transform, so, so all sentient beings um, have the same mind, um, but the way we should understand it is so from, from the perspective of the Mahayana mind, 
on dedica in the dedication of the Mahayana mind. Uh, so for example, we can trans transforming here is that we can bring to mind the virtue that someone has created without knowing that, um, and then we transform it for them, and it be we dedicate it on their behalf. For example, a honeybee produces honey. So because there's honeybees, um, there's a lot of honey. And that is actually, the presence of honeybees is actually an incredible merit for the bees. But the bees don't know that. They don't know that they're accumulating so much merit. And so therefore we can bring it to mind for them and take, um, take their merit um, and tr like onto our own mind and then transform it into something meritorious so they receive the results, and then the honeybees actually do receive the results of their own merit. And as a result, for example, they are born with uh, wings and they can fly unobstructedly through space. They possess great merit. There's some animals who do not have that merit. Some animals don't have any legs or hands, or they are very, very helpless, like ants, for example. Whoever sees the ant can just um, eat it. Um, so that they don't have that same kind of merit. And the difference here, even when it comes to the slightest um, happiness or slightest advantage, it is all due to merit, even on a smaller scale. So therefore it's important to bring it all to mind and dedicate it because then they can also benefit from that. They can receive the results in the end. So that is that transforming from that, that dedication prayer. Uh, we are also transforming any impure motivations that we might have had into pure motivations. So transformed and then made perfectly complete in great purity that means that um, all the virtues accumulated in samsara and nirvana throughout the three times we can bring them all to mind and then dedicate it, give it away for all sentient beings. Uh, so, and in this way, um, they are made perfectly complete. So even though the intention may not have been pure to begin with, we bring it to mind, we recognize it for them and then dedicate it, and they receive it because their consciousness is one with our own mind. There is just a single, a single basis. And due to that, they receive the, the benefits from our dedication made on their behalf. So that's another special quality of the Buddhist practice. And so this line comes from the words of auspiciousness in the Vajrakilaya Sadhana. And uh, I'm mentioning that because once a disciple asked about the meaning of that, what does it mean to transform and then perfect the roots of virtue? And that made me think about that, and, and this is the conclusion I came to. We need to transform the roots of virtue um, of others um, and any kind of negative motivations from the past, and then make it complete, make it a perfect dedication, just like the Buddhas have dedicated. <coughs> And then it is dedicated to total purity, and that is we are dedicating it with the result of complete enlightenment in, in mind. So this is also what occurred in, in my mind, and I'm not sure if it, if it is correct or not. Mm. え、たんてけてにゃみてやらごんはでまんぼなんげよれ。いえねんて、たんてさてかれ、たぼさんちょせんち、ばるせんちょせん、ごん、てりたんさんちょせんご、てたんてんごんもなんてけちょんちょんだ
Sai che matta a zima, ti nuovare, tu a mona di rettina, cari, se non è, sam nige ti è gore, sam bara ti è nige ti è, nige ti è, 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 e se non si fa carriera, non si fa carriera. 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 Non si fa So this completes my commentary on the um, a prayer uh, for excellent conduct, and I just gave you really a, you know, a rough outline. I don't know how to explain it really well, uh, but in brief, whatever um, practice we engage in, we may practice a day team, we may meditate, recite mantra, and so forth. The essence of all these practices is bodhicitta. The root is bodhicitta. So first, in the beginning, we cultivate bodhicitta. Then in the middle, we habituate, we practice bodhicitta, we meditate on it, and then thirdly, we dedicate it. And actually, the mind generation or the motivation from the beginning also is brought to the end when we dedicate. And some people, uh, they do not consider dedication prayers are so important, but actually they are extremely important. For example, when we read the uh, dedication prayer of the Bodhicharya Vatara, Shantideva's dedication prayer, there are many verses that each speak about a certain kind of suffering of sentient beings. And when we read through each of these verses, we really bring to mind each and every suffering of sentient beings. And the Buddha said, you have to recognize suffering. Um, for example, in one prayer, it says, may those who come from far away um, safely reach their destination. For example, when somebody makes a trip on an airplane to reunite with their family, and the family loves them very much, and they can't wait to see that person, and they, um, they are anxiously waiting for him to arrive, and he's in the airplane, and then the airplane crashes and he dies. Like how much suffering is that? How does that family feel when that happens? And so in this line we are praying, may things like this not happen to anyone. And so it is very Im an important prayer because in each of these verses we can develop this a certain kind of feeling. And some people, they um, say that, There's just too many, too many verses in that dedication prayer. It's too long. There's too many examples. But that's really mistaken because we need to generate, we need to cultivate love and compassion. So from love arises compassion, and from compassion, the wish to clear away the suffering of others. And then again, what is the method? It is bodhicitta. So again, we have come around in a circle. Um, And so this prayer is, and many others, are contained in our blue prayer book, which was uh, kindly provided, um, given to us uh, by the Tara Foundation. And it contains the most important prayers. And whoever would like to take one home, please um, take one. You're welcome to take one of those prayer books home. These prayers are extremely precious. Actually, if you don't know how to do various practices, if you just recite prayers, like the prayer for excellent conduct and the prayers contained in the blue prayer book, that is actually enough. You can just recite um, those prayers and practice them. So with that, um, Dharma friends, um, Dashi Delek, and I hope you will um, be you're well in body and mind, and I pray that bodhicitta may arise in you. Nisam
So yesterday we uh, recited the prayer for excellent conduct in dedication, and today we will read Shanti Deva's dedication prayer. And those two prayers are actually they are like one; they are like a union. And so that um, prayer, or is it is on page sixty-one in the blue prayer book. By all the virtue I have now amassed, by composition of this book, which speaks of entry to the Bodhisattva way, may every being tread the path to Buddhahood. May beings everywhere who suffer torment in their minds and bodies have, by virtue of my merit, joy and happiness in boundless measure. As long as they may linger in samsara, may their present joy know no decline, and may they taste of unsurpassed beatitude in constant and unbroken continuity, throughout the spheres and reaches of the world, in hellish states, wherever they may be, may beings fettered there, tormented, taste the bliss and peace of Sukhavati. May those caught in the freezing ice be warmed, and from the massing clouds of Bodhisattva's prayers, may torrents rain in boundless streams to cool those burning in infernal fires. May forests where the leaves are blades and swords become sweet groves and pleasant woodland glades. And may the trees of miracles appear, supplanting those upon the hill of Shalmali. And may the very pits of hell be sweet, with fragrant pools all perfumed with the scent of lotuses. Be lovely with the cries of swan and goose and waterfowl so pleasing to the ear. May fiery coals turn into heaps of jewels the burning ground become a crystal floor, the crushing hills celestial abodes, adorned with offerings, the dwelling place of Buddhas. May the hail of lava, fiery stones and weapons, henceforth become a rain of blossoms. May those whose hell it is to fight and wound be turned to lovers, offering their flowers. And those engulfed in fiery vatarani, their flesh destroyed, their bones bleached white as gunda flowers, May they, through all my merit strength, have godlike forms and sport with goddesses in Mandakini's peaceful streams. What fear is it, they'll ask, that grips the henchmen of the deadly lord, the frightful vultures and the carrion crows? What noble strength is it that brings us joy and drives away our dreadful night? And looking skyward, they will see the shining form of Vajrapani. Then may their sins be quenched in joy, and may they go to him. And when they see the seething lava flood of hell, extinguished in a rain of blossoms, drenched in scented water, at once fulfilled in bliss, they'll ask, how can this be? And thus the denizens of hell will see the one who holds the lotus. Friends, throw away your fears and quickly gather here. For who is it who comes to banish dread this youth with bound up gleaming hair, this loving bodhisattva saving and protecting every being, whose power relieves all pain, increasing joy? Do you see the splendor of his house that echoes praises of a thousand goddesses, the hundred gods who lay their diadems before his lotus feet, the rain of flowers falling on his head, his eyes moist with compassion? Thus may those in hell cry out on seeing Manchu Gosha, and likewise when, through these my roots of virtue, they see the joyful clouds let fall the cooling scented rain, their obscurations cleansed by bodhisattvas like Samantabhadra. May all those languishing in hell come now to perfect happiness, and may the stooping animals be freed from fear of being preyed upon each other's food, and may the famished spirits have such joy as those who dwell within the northern continent. And may they be replete and satisfied by streams of milk that pour from noble Lord Avalokita's hand. And bathing in it, may they be refreshed and cooled. And may the blind receive their sight. And may the deaf begin to hear. And women near their time bring forth, like Maya Devi, free from any pain. And may the naked now be clothed. And all the hungry eat their fill. And may those parched with thirst receive pure waters and delicious drink. May the poor and destitute find wealth, the haggard and the careworn joy. May confidence relieve those in despair and bring them steadfastness and every excellence. 
May every being ailing with disease be freed at once from every malady. May all the sickness that afflicts the living be instantly and permanently healed. May those who go in dread have no more fear. May captives be unchained and now set free. And may the weak receive their strength. May living beings help each other in kindness. May travelers upon the road find happiness no matter where they go. And may they gain without the need of toil the goals on which they set their hearts. May those who put to sea in boat or ship attain the ports that they desire. And may they safely come to shore and sweet reunion with their kith and kin. May those who lose their way and stray in misery find fellow travelers and safe from the threat of thieves and savage beasts be tireless and their journey light. May children and the old, the weak, protectorless, bewildered in the wild and pathless wastes, and those whose minds are dulled, and all who are insane, have pure celestial beings as their guardians. May all attain the human state and be possessed of wisdom, faith, and love. With perfect livelihood and sustenance, may they have mindfulness throughout their lives. May everyone have unrestricted wealth, just like the treasury of space, enjoying it according to their wish, without a trace of harm or enmity. May beings destitute of splendor become magnificent and bright, and those worn down by toil and drudgery acquire great beauty and perfection. May all the women in this world attain the strength of masculinity, and may the lowly come to excellence, the proud and haughty lose their arrogance. And thus, by all the merit I have gained, may every being, leaving none aside, abandon all their evil ways, embracing goodness now and evermore. From bodhicitta, may they never separate and constantly engage in bodhisattva deeds. And may they be accepted as disciples by the Buddhas and turn aside from what is Mara's work. And may these beings, each and every one, enjoy an unsurpassed longevity living always in contentment, may the very name of death be strange to them. On every side, in all the ten directions, may groves of wish-fulfilling trees abound, resounding with the sweetness of the teachings spoken by the Buddhas and their Bodhisattva children. And may the earth be wholesome everywhere, free from boulders, cliffs, and chasms, flat and even like a level palm, and smooth like lapis lazuli. And for many circles of disciples, may multitudes of bodhisattvas rise in every land, adorning them with every excellence, from birdsong and the sighing of the trees, from shafts of light and from the sky itself. May living beings, each and every one, perceive the constant sound of Dharma. May they come into the presence of the Buddhas and meet with bodhisattvas, offspring of the same, with clouds of offerings unbounded, May the teachers of the world be worshipped. May kindly spirits bring the rains on time for harvests to be rich and plentiful. May princes rule according to the truth and may the world be blessed with all prosperity. May medicines be strong and full of virtue. May healing spells be chanted with success. May spirits of the air that feed on flesh be kind, their minds imbued with pity. And let no being ever suffer pain let them neither ail nor languish, never doing evil. May they have no fear nor suffer insults, and may their minds be ever free from sorrow. In monasteries, temples, and the like, may reading and reciting widely flourish. May harmony prevail among the Sangha, and may its purpose be all fulfilled. May ordained monks intent upon the practice find perfect places for a retreat in solitude, Abandon every vagrant thought and meditate with trained and serviceable minds. May nuns have all their wants supplied. May quarreling vindictiveness be strange to them. Let all who have embraced monastic life uphold a pure and unimpaired observance. May they feel regret when discipline is broken. And always may they strive to cleanse away their faults. May they thus obtain a fortunate rebirth wherein to undertake unfailing discipline. May the wise and learned be revered and always be sustained by offerings. With minds suffused with purity, may their renown spread far and wide. May beings never languish in the lower realms, 
may pain and hardship be unknown to them, enjoying more than godlike strength and beauty. May Buddhahood for them be swiftly gained. Again and yet again may sentient beings make offerings to all the Buddhas, and with Buddha's unimagined bliss, may they enjoy undimmed and constant happiness. May the, all the bodhisattvas now fulfill their high intention for the sake of beings, and sentient beings likewise now receive the good the Buddhas have in store for them. And may the Arhats and Pratyeka Buddhas at length attain their perfect happiness. And may I also, through Manjushri's kindness, reach the ground of perfect joy, and throughout the stream of all my lives embrace monastic ordination. Thus may I abide sustained by simple ordinary fare, and in every life obtain a dwelling place in perfect solitude. Whenever I desire to gaze on him or put to him the slightest question, may I behold the unobstructed vision of Manjugosha, my protector, to satisfy the needs of beings dwelling in the ten directions to the margins of the sky. May I reflect in every deed the perfect exploits of Manjushri. And now, as long as space endures, as long as there are beings to be found, may I continue likewise to remain to drive away the sorrows of the world, the pains and sorrows of all wandering beings. May they ripen wholly on myself, and may the virtuous company of bodhisattvas bring about the happiness of beings. May the doctrine only remedy for suffering, the source of every bliss and happiness, be nurtured and upheld with reverence, and throughout a vast continuance of time endure. And now to Manchu Gosha I prostrate, whose kindness is the wellspring of my good intent. And to my virtuous friends I also bow, whose inspiration gave me strength to grow. Now we've got some sound. Okay, this completes our summer retreat and uh, these incredible teachings that His Eminence Garcha Rinpoche has given to us day after day. Uh, we are beyond grateful for these profound instructions and we will all do our best to put them into practice and uh, we ask you to continue to guide us always, Rinpoche. We love you. And this is a offerings from the Garchin Institute and all of the um, participants here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rinpoche. Thank you. Uh, we also want to thank um, Kempo Searing Tashi for joining us for this retreat and for all the wonderful question and answer sessions and all of the, the illuminating um, dharma that you've transmitted to us here. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kempo. We also want to thank Kempo Tenzin for his wonderful question and answer sessions and helping us better understand this text in the Dharma. Thank you so much, Kempo. And uh, we also would like to thank our other uh, monastics that have been with us for this retreat, Lamu Bnima and Kempo Tupsang and Ani Sampton. Thank you. And uh, we'd also like to thank um, all of the staff for all their work in running this retreat, all the preparations and running the retreat. 
And so thank you to Elizabeth for all her hard work and for Tom for doing the live stream and for Vonda for all the registration work. And thank you to Nick for all the maintenance. And, um, and we also couldn't do this without all our wonderful volunteers who really dedicate so much um, hard work to make everything run beautifully at, at the Garchin Institute. And especially want to do a shout out to Pavel, who is going to be leaving us soon. Thank you so much for feeding us all the beautiful food, and Alex for, for helping out in the kitchen, and then all our other volunteers. We want to thank all of our participants for coming and joining in and making this a really blessed time. And thank you for everyone online for contributing. And then, of course, we wouldn't be able to understand any of the teachings if it weren't for Ina's great translations. So thank you so much, Ina. And um, so until next time, please, everyone, keep coming back. <laughs> Um, thank you, everyone who is here and on the live stream. Um, and everyone who is here has just received um, this um, tanka um, print, this image of White Tara, and um, which says, White Tara protected, or Tara protected my life uh, eight times. And uh, this particular image is the image um, of Tara who directly actually touched my head. And now I'm offering that to everyone here. I've offered that to some disciples in the past as well. This is a very um, special image of Tara. So again, Dharma friends, um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I pray um, for your happiness, your well-being. And uh, please continue to practice Tara. Just a quick reminder that all the offerings that were, have been made to all of our teachers and, and lamas and translator are on behalf of everyone here in the temple. Uh, so there'll be no individual offerings made. They're, they're all combined in these envelopes. Thank you so much.